Welcome back to the Church Front Show, and today we are joined by Mr. Ryan Dahl, the founder, the creator, the man, the myth, the legend behind PraiseCharts.com, which you guys have probably heard of this little this little website that you know they have a few helpful resources on there. Probably probably come across it before as a worship leader. I know I'm I just have... trying to keep up with the church friends, dude. Your your website is amazing. I need to um, our dude. I'm still using like a Squarespace site and oh, j- yeah. janky WordPress stuff. And but I mean, just everything that you're doing, man. It's 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 such an inspiration. So it's great to have you on the show. I'd love to just kind of catch up. I think we chatted. Uh, man, man, was it almost two years ago now? Um, time yep. time has flown, and a lot's happened in the past year. Um, we're both part of the Worship Innovators Network. Um, but go ahead and give people a little bit more um, context about where, where are you at right now, what you're working on. Um, tell, us, tell them a little bit more about Praise Charts. Well, first thing I got to say, I told Jake that I was going to come up with something. I wasn't going to tell him this. But Jake, I have to say... You have changed my life <laughs> radically in the last three months. Somehow I was watching the Church Front show and you mentioned live streaming and ecam. I mean, the last time we did an interview, it wasn't video or nothing. It was just audio. Yeah. So you mentioned this program, uh, ecam. Anyways, I went into Google, started searching about it, and suddenly live streaming just became all the rage for me. And I don't know if you've been paying attention to praise charts, but for the last... Uh, maybe a couple of weeks, we started up a live streaming show maybe a month ago. Well, since I watched your show, you mentioned live streaming, Ecamm, I bought the program. Then I like outfitted my office. I got lights, camera, you know, all this kind of gear that you're seeing around me. And uh, I've just been having a blast uh, starting up Praise Starts Live on YouTube. So, uh, so then get this is like you called me and said hey can you be on my show and then i'm like well can you be on my show that'd be awesome and tomorrow (laughs) live streaming pros is interviewing me because they're so impressed with my like lighting and setup but i'm going to tell them it all starts with jake goslin and the church friend show so hey well that's where the that's that's pretty that's um i'm honored to uh that i (laughs) inspired you man because i think uh yeah again like it's uh, well I'm very, first of all, I'm very impressed. I do love the lighting's perfect. The audio's great. You get a 10 uh-huh. out, you get a 10 out of 10 a plus with your live streaming setup there. We did, we used to use e- Ecamm before. Yeah. And then we, we wanted to use a hardware uh, streaming encoder software, uh, using Resi and stuff. So then, but then it yeah. became 10 times like, no, probably it's probably like a hundred times more expensive what we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, it's a little complicated too. Ecamm is pretty like, but we got we got an extra ten percent on our quality, so exactly we spent a hundred <laughs> oh, times <laughs> more for a ten percent improvement. Um, well, the biggest improvement for me, which maybe you can tell, it's like I'm not that good looking, but my camera makes it look like people are constantly telling me how crisp my face looks or the background or it blurs. I mean, there's all these things that a nice camera does. Yeah. Yesterday, I was on. Um, church music publishing conference. So there's like a hundred major music publishers from all around the world all come together. And normally they meet in person, but it was on zoom. Hmm. And so it's like, I'm one face out of, you know, a hundred across six different screens, but people are texting me going, Ryan, how come your feed looks way better than ours? What, what is that webcam that you have? Yeah. So yeah, well, it's anyway. it's nice because it's like I think a lot of people don't realize how accessible these tools are. Um, even even just getting a decent mirrorless camera. What what camera are you using? Yeah, I'll tell you. It's uh, I mean, we can talk about cameras and live stream all day. We don't have yeah. to talk about praise cards at all because I'm all on to a new kick here. Yeah, so. well, give us a rundown of your setup. Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, and and cool thing is, if you go to Praise Charts Live, I actually recorded a video. I just a hack video with my son on a on an iPhone, and we sort of went through my whole office, and I showed and talked about all the different elements. So if anybody's interested, you can do that. But so the one key thing was uh, I've got the Sony A6400. Yep. So there's a couple. There's the A6100, 6400, 6000. But any of those, they all have similar guts to them so there's that and then you also need a really good lens and so my lens is the sigma uh, f1.4 
something like that. 16, uh, you know. 16 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. That yep. kind of thing. Yeah. So I've got the same exact. Getting, uh, I got the same the one. Nice clear, yeah. Getting the nice clear focus. And then it's something that creates a little bit of a blur in the background. And that's what creates that effect that you just cannot get like no webcam. Nothing will do that. If you want that look, um, you know, then like totally. if you're not as good looking like me and you want to look good, just get yourself. Oh, a camera come on. You, come on. You're like, oh, man. Wow. That's awesome. So can the camera's got plenty of handsome, handsome uh, subject to work with there. So yeah, right, right. OK, so and then the second thing just to say. And so tomorrow there's a website called Live Streaming Pros, okay. which I followed and I have a hunch they must be a bunch of Christians running this thing, even though it's not a Christian thing. But uh, Luria Pachucci is her name. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but she's she's just like a gal. She's got a really nice setup and she just talked about live streaming four times a day. She goes live. And so I was watching her and just found myself really inspired by, you know, how is she doing this? What is she doing? And and the cool thing was the show is all about exactly how she's doing what she's doing. So yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, I saw, I had heard of her channel. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's pretty cool. Looks, looks uh -huh. great. Yeah. Great content. So tomorrow she's actually interviewing me along with a couple other people specifically about lighting. Cause I have this giant, like literally there's about a six foot, light above my desk hmm. and uh and that's what they call it a, a soft box right yep. and so that's how you get the lighting without deep shadows because if, if you have a small light or um totally. something like that you end yeah up no i thought you're i i, I would have said you were sitting in front of a window big window or something mm -hmm. it looked that well i do natural. have a window there is a window there mm -hmm. and uh normally i can like black it out it's a bit bright right now but but I do have a, a big giant light here. Yeah. So, um, so that's what gives that kind of fill. And then I've got a few other lights. Uh, something else kind of fun that I've gotten is this thing here. These are called uh, aperture lights. So you can like flick them on like that. Oh, and then yeah. they go to all different colors. So these are nice. You can just put them in different places. Like I put it often, I'll put it right behind that guitar. I've got a little yeah. kind of magnetic thing and it creates a bit of a glow. They call all of that uh, stuff practical lights, like that light right there, which is kind of like an old Edison um, plumbing pipe light, which looks really nice when it's dim and dark and then it kind of lights up. Yeah. So that all creates a bit of the effect. Yeah. What about audio? And, uh, yeah. Oh, audio. So it's a, it's a big, um, what do you call the long mics? It's, shotgun. It's shotgun. So it's a shotgun Seinhauser. Um, it's uh, I linked to it in my, my YouTube channel, but it's a, it's a decent one. And funny enough, I don't even own it. It's my friends. He wasn't using it. So I borrowed it and it's, it sits like right here. Uh, you can see this is the screen and the, 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 the microphone is like literally right above. Yeah. In fact, oh, this is kind of cool. Look what I can do because I'm in, uh, I'm in, um, you'll like this. Just give me a second here. Wow. Oh, you see that? Wow. Look at, Look at that. that. Okay. So I can do this because I'm in, um, I'm running through Ecamm. So then you can see my whole setup. You see the big light here, my piano. I've got a, Another, I put my iPhone here and I run it through this app called Shoot Clean. Make a note of that. It's a good one because it basically turns your iPhone into a second camera. Here you can see the big shotgun. And then uh, I've got an iPad, my laptop. I'm talking to you through my uh, teleprompter. And then, um, oh, nice. Here's my lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some other lights. You can see like this light over here kind of casts it's sort of secondary light so it's casting against a white sheet hmm. and then there's my window so anyways that's all what man you just and, dove you went all in you just you just went for it it's awesome well i'm a bit like that i yeah I, my kids and my staff they all know ryan gets onto a thing and then that's all he wants to talk about so that's great um, yeah <laughs> that's what, that's what i do too sometimes yeah yeah, <laughs> my latest thing Great. has been my uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. uh, 
We get you. Have you have you hopped on that bandwagon yet? No, okay. not in that bin. But I have a hunch. If you tell me read, about it, I can read a book. I'm your read a book so called read, read a book called the Bitcoin Standard. That's all I'll say. Okay. And then just let it. Let's okay. see where it goes from there. Sounds good. I have a question about your uh, teleprompter. Did you use yeah. that so that you can look directly into the camera when you're looking at people? Yes. Because I totally. can tell. I can yeah. tell you're looking like at the yeah. At, at Zoom, you. I'm staring into your eyes. So right yeah. now. wait. So the You're teleprompter, but but tell me what's happening though. How are you getting our image on the teleprompter? You just how, how am I getting your? Oh well, um, I wish I could show you if I had another uh, angle. But the, uh, like a teleprompter is a screen at the bottom, and then here I can show you like yeah, this. Yeah. So yep. so I'm looking into this mirror, uh -huh. and the mirror is is going up from this. Screen oh. here up to the mirror and then so i think to me. if you show your your big angle like of the yeah. up top so what is that screen is that like a mirrored from your your computer yeah. it's like it's like a third monitor i can literally mouse from here through this it's a separate okay. monitor and then i got my laptop and i've got it set up so i can carry my mouse all the way through like it's one giant screen yeah but the the whole monitor and i actually got a, a decent i spent like 800 dollars or something on this screen here because i've tried them before where you get like a dull image and uh and it's terrible so i got a nice monitor so that what i'm looking at is actually a reflection but it feels like a true monitor it, it doesn't feel like a secondary reflection off of something and and i don't even see the camera like when I'm pointing right now, the camera is sitting right behind there, but I don't even I don't even see it. Nice. Another thing I'll just say about teleprompting too is I've experimented a bit. And I'll just go back to my my uh, thing. I've experimented a bit with when I introduce my shows. Sometimes I'll read a script, but I just hate the feeling of reading a teleprompter. I just suck the personality out of me. Mm. And so my whole thing about a teleprompter is it's not about reading scripts. It's about looking at people, looking into your eyes and not being distracted, not looking off like this and like that all the time. So that's cool. I want to talk and engage and make it a kind of a personable experience. And, and, and I interview guests just like I'm doing with you, like, see, there's my, my interview screen like that. Oh, yeah. That's Ecamm. So, um, yeah. And then my other cool thing, this is like so great. I'll show you here is see this little box here. This is called a stream deck. Are you guys familiar with what yes, a stream deck? Yes, dude. We, we just, we dove all in with stream decks recently. We got one here. Oh, look at you. Yeah, we got one okay, little one. Well, I mean, you've got yeah. the 12 button one. I've got the 32 button one. So, wow. so there you go. Yeah, Aaron. Well, I guess the, the church that we all serve at uh, has what, three or four now? Mm -hmm. Wow, one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Every every in our tech booths in our church, every station has one. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's amazing what you can program with these things. Really amazing. Yeah. Well, the this the, the simplest thing is anything that you can do a hotkey to, these things are basically just like hotkey interceptors. So if you make it like control command shift you know, F3 or something, mm -hmm. you can turn that into a single button and put a graphic on it and put a label on it. And then you don't have to remember, oh man, what was that? You know, how did I contort my fingers to get that action to happen? So yeah, yeah we actually just added a new button today. So okay, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to, to get it in focus yeah. there. Uh, if it goes in front of my screen, it's a little too small, but um, I took Jake's Facebook picture and put it on the button. So, like, when I hit the Jake button, it goes to him. Yeah, he sees, oh, yeah. He sees my face every time. Yeah. Great. It's, Great. it's fun. And, and another thing about uh, just to go on the Stream Deck thing is the multi-action thing. So, so it's cool that you can do one thing, but then what Stream Deck lets you do is line up, like, five or six. For example, with me... If I press one single button, my studio lights come on, my office lights go off, my um, uh, live streaming program on my computer comes on, 
other programs shut down, windows organized, like all of that literally happens in in one button. It can even so, it can organize windows too. Yeah. Wow. Can it make coffee for you? You know, I feel like I am teaching Jake Goslin something he, right now. He, it's yeah. just feels weird. Between you and then Aaron, our other worship pastor, diving into this, I feel like the stream decks are I mean, I think my whole life is going to be stream decks pretty soon. I'm, I'll yeah. put one in our kitchen at home. I'm pretty sure Will Doggett did a thing where he like made a MIDI command translate to an Apple yeah. home kit thing. So it actually did start his coffee from yeah. Ableton. Can you, can you make coffee with Ableton? Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Wow. This is a show about worship, isn't it? I feel like we're just talking about live streaming. Yeah, but so much of worship right now happens. Live streaming live streaming's a big deal, you know? It's something, yeah, it and, and it never, you know, the kind of tweaking of things and in, in, in these new tools that these companies are developing, whether it's Ecamm or, or Elgato or uh, these camera companies, like we just, we live in a great time. You know, it's, it's, yeah. It's almost, it's almost like we have to, we have to learn sometimes to be a little content with like, okay, I think we're good with this setup, but then we just keep coming up with ideas. Yeah. But I mean, the other thing too is you can think of it as a way to serve your volunteers because yeah. like having, having one of these things and uh, being able to like have a bunch of buttons that do what they need to do instead of saying, Hey, learn how to use this software. And within this yeah. software, you have to do this thing, but at the same time, yeah. go to this other software and do this. It's like yeah, hit the button. Hit the button. Yeah, it says what it needs Boom. to do. Yeah, yeah. So, what, tell us a little bit more about what you guys have been up to at, at Praise Charts in the last I don't know what eight, almost twenty four months since we actually talked. Like since uh, yeah. t- late twenty nineteen through twenty twenty. What have you guys been doing? Okay, well, uh, so about three years ago, maybe four years ago, we decided to do the you know decided to enter into a big reprogramming state so rebuilding the site from the ground up rebuilding the front end from the ground up and it just felt like it took forever because i feel like what we do on the front end is very simple you just go you find a song you want to download a lead sheet get the lead sheet like how complicated can that be but the reality is there's 647 steps that we have to pre-think so that it's just like praise charts is just like a stream deck you know it's like you're pressing one button as a customer but Mm. we're programming it to do so many different things and uh and so just like so many we got pdfs and wave files and mp3 files and data just coming out of our you know brains and trying to do the whole Thing of music publishing legally as well because we're paying royalties and licensing and playing commissions and one song you could have you know commissions splitting out in like 16 different ways some guy gets 2.37 percent and another person gets four percent and uh-huh. and then ownerships of songs change and we got to deal with all of that so anyways it took literally two or three years to reinvent the whole website and we launched it in december one believe it or not it's like then the complaints started coming in like day two people were like where is this what happened to this i can't find this this is broken (laughs) we were frantic heading towards christmas trying to plug holes uh, because we had left some things off the website that we thought oh nobody uses that we can just leave it out we'll come to it later and everyone's like, that was my favorite part. And yeah. And uh, literally getting mistakes going, why are you guys doing this? It was working fine. You know, now I have to go refine everything. So, mm. so this is kind of like the price of uh, innovation, I guess you might say, is sometimes you have to dip a little bit down before you can, you know, go back forward. And then, of course, all of that happened amidst. COVID. So COVID happened in March and we were planning to launch the new praise charts in July. But when COVID happened, I mean, it's most sheet music companies and music publishing companies, many of them were closing stores or shutting down. I've heard a lot of my friends in the music publishing company doing that. So we took a big hit for sure in the first couple of months and just kind of took it day to day and tried to like clamp down on all of our extra um, expenses until we could see ourselves starting to track up 
And then there kind of came a point where we thought, you know, this is not going to last forever. So we're going to just press on with our development and be here ready when, when it's over. And uh, it's kind of a cool thing to say, to share this, that literally just in the last week, we crossed over a point where we have um, come back to the place where we were in 2019, like the, the growth trajectory that we were on, which was kind of moderate, but mm -hmm. constant. So that's kind of how we're tracking right now is we're just, you know, getting, getting back. It feels like America, especially, and I know that all different states are experiencing it differently, but the average of America, as far as how they're using praise charts anyways, seems to be more confident in using music. So, so that's cool. Yeah. And then the other thing has been that we're now four months, months into fixing a lot of the problems and, and adding new features and just smoothing the site out and, and all of that. So, uh, so the main thing, if you're interested, I, I feel like one of the main functions of the new praise charts is really to make search and find so much more of a natural experience right from Google, not even from praise charts, but it's, it's important when you're, uh, you know, a site like praise charts, you want to be discovered when people are going to Google mm -hmm. so that they'll find the link to come right into the very place in praise charts from Google, you could land right on the chord chart or the, or the orchestration or the multi-track or whatever the thing is. So structuring a site so that it's very intuitive and very easy for people to to land into praise charts in one of 40 or 50,000 different combinations of pages. So that's been a big thing. And then uh, the second thing that's been big is song lists that uh, we've just created hundreds and hundreds of different lists that are all dynamically updating every day or every week based on user activity. So like right now, for example, we're seeing that songs from Mother's Day is trending really high. And yeah, all of those lists, that's awesome. So so any of those lists, like top songs today, of course, that's going to be really interesting. There's Mother's Day. There's oh, yeah. top songs today. We can flip to a couple. But, but uh, so top 100 worship songs of all time, that's been a super popular list because people just want to know what are like rock solid songs that have stood the test of time. These are all older worship songs to, to you and me, but these are the ones that have, you know, paved the way in the last 10 or 15 years. And this is all based on real time data in praise charts. So why don't you flip over to like top songs today, or I'll show you a couple of the, the lists that I love in praise charts. So this is, this is literally like today, it starts at midnight. And if you just want to know, you know, especially after a Friday when we release new songs, um, then, uh, and these lists are supposed to be, uh, you know, yeah, updating very regularly. Another one that I really like, go back to the homepage if you can. Uh, that's awesome. So top new worship songs. This list is golden because there's so much new music. If you click on mm -hmm. the title there, you can actually go into the list. So oh, there yeah. you go, that title, that's right. So this list is of the music that has been added to Praise Chart in the last, say, 60 days or so. What is the best of that stuff? So it's not going to have what a beautiful name or I don't know what's the, even Battle Belongs is already off of this list mm. because it's been around so long. But the new stuff that's just coming out, you can kind of look through and, and uh, it's a great kind of gateway into the best of the freshest music. The deeper you go down into the list, the more it's going to be like there's, you know, thinner sales down there. But at the, at the top, go to the top of the list. That's, that's like, that's what is really happening in modern Christian music today uh house of the lord of course has been huge it's like twice as much as the number two song it's it's just really wow. connected and i did a great interview with phil wickham when that came out super fun i love the song 
Maverick City is uh, is a whole like so funny with Maverick City. I would send all these songs to our arrangers, and they're like, I don't know where to end this song. It just feels like it goes on forever. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, I think it ends here, but then they start this whole new thing. So I feel like Maverick City is kind of reinventing how worship songs are done. They're definitely not three minute radio songs so that's been fun seeing that where they're really catching on a lot and new album comes out from them and elevation tomorrow so we're all kind mm-hmm. of on top of that and and as you can tell i get just revved up by new music fresh music then i i love like the charts and the sheet music the notes i take the stuff that comes out of our um, arrangers or orchestrators. We just orchestrated Maverick City Waiting on You. That's like a new single that came out last week. And uh, Dan Galbraith just submitted it into our into our uh, production line. He's like 310 pages of music that mm. he was pumping out for that. So that all kind of revs me up. And uh, the whole goal is with Praise Charts, we just sort of dump it into this online system, which is basically a big program that sorts it all. It's like if sometimes we talk about if you dumped a whole bucket of change and it was full of quarters and and loonies and, you know, dimes and whatever, and the system just like shook it all Hmm. and all the quarters landed in a everything landed in its right place and sorted it all for you. So praise charts kind of does that for, for worship music in all different ways. You know, it's like, if you want hymns and go to the hymns order, if you want um, modern music, if you want acoustic, you want radio, whatever kind of church you are, uh, you can kind of go to the list and that list is constantly reinventing itself every day and and refreshing itself with new music so so that's kind of like the whole master vision of what the new praise church is uh well my i i love the site the first time i came across it i don't know probably somewhere in december january um i you know it didn't skip a beat for me just finding a song i wanted getting awesome. getting the chord pro all i the one thing i i, I buy on a regular basis Probably almost every week I plan is some sort of chart. I just I, I just I just want a Chord Pro version of a chart that I usually just copy and paste right. the text into um, Planning Center and uh, yeah. in my Planning Center editor, and then I'm I'm good to go. So yeah, uh, I know you guys can sync PDFs to Planning Center. I wasn't missing the fact that like you can't just there's not the feature to automatically send your your raw text into Planning Center's Chord Editor, right? Do I? I- uh, I, you know what? I know that we are currently in final stages of working this out with Planning Center. We just did a whole bunch of coding specifically for them oh, cool. in late 2020. And so um, I think that where we got to is we prepared the whole, they call it an API. That's the digital connection that websites make yeah. together. So we prepared it for them and then their team just needed to do the, the integration. So uh, all that to say is we're very close uh, with Planning Center. We have a great relationship. It's fun because Aaron Stewart, the guy that one of the founders of Planning Center is a former Praise Charts user. So mm. he loved Praise Charts and he's highly motivated to work closely with us. That's cool. And um, we definitely know that that connection is important. We're always working on it. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and do you guys have when you do the these website builds and maintenance? Do you have do, do your, all your own developers do that, or do you have an outside firm yeah. that you work with? Yeah, well, I have. A, so it's this is kind of literally how it is today. Just when I realized that, oh shoot, I have a live stream with Churchfront. I was just talking to my lead developer trying to solve a little coding thing and my lead developer happens to be one of my closest friends Mm. and so this morning this is how my day went this morning i went to my mom's house and we played this board game called king's cribbage with uh my lead developer because he was like he just wanted to hang out and i wanted to hang out we had time this morning so i went to my mom's and 
sat at her table, had coffee, played this board game. Uh, last week we played pickleball together and then uh, he needed to get back to his place to do work. And I need, had staff meeting at 11 o'clock this morning. So I've got that kind of real kinship friendship with this guy who owns his own development firm. So he hires, he's got five or six guys on his team and we probably consume about half of their kind of bandwidth or capacity. We're their major client. And so, okay. and, and sometimes this, his name is Paul. Sometimes he just will come to our office and just work on our table. And sometimes he'll go to his office. We just, and we hang out, we play cornhole together. I mean, people that know me know I like the game of cornhole and we have that kind of family vibe. Yeah. He's a brainiac. He just knows deep, deep code systems. And then I have also another developer guy who's on the praise chart staff and he, he sort of is the conversational kind of connection point between our team and the, the coders. So it's like, he's like our translator, I guess you might say he takes our vision and translates it into how do we need to talk to coders about this? So, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So that's I just don't yeah. know anything about, building software and you know other than yeah. there's i i've always been kind of a diy or about stuff but we're also getting to the stage now where we're like yeah. jake's jake's diy solutions that he built two year two three years ago are not not really yeah. scaling well so who knows we'll have to might have to find a developer someday but, oh, that, but jake you're like me a little bit that we're like innovating minds mm -hmm. and you got to find people on your team who can take our visions yeah and and implement them right you can't be all things to all people yeah and i think what's most intimidating about this just the software world is because i have such um limited knowledge of that and how any of that stuff works with code and building sites and apps and all that it's uh -huh. it's harder to um outsource slash delegate that or whatever to someone because it's like i don't even really fully understand it whereas like a lot of the things so far as we've built a team at church front, it's been things that I've kind of known how to do. Like every role we have on our team, like I kind of know how to do myself and it's more like mm -hmm. just, you know, there's not enough time in a day for me to do it all myself. And right. um, so that's where I think software is just, it's just a more intimidating realm to, to dive into, but yeah. we would love to, uh, we would love to make some major upgrades to our worship ministry school site, which is the primary, like, thing that our you know our users and customers are, are working with on a daily basis it's simple because it really is just a membership site with courses and yeah. videos it's not like we're, we're not, we don't have nearly as much pages or data that you're working with for something like yeah. praise charts but so I, don't, I i do think it could be a small enough scale thing where we could like find a good developer yeah. pay them a decent chunk of change even if they like were a contract and they they built it out but yeah i kind of want to get to a place where we could have someone um full time though on our team who could like just be in house because I feel like software is such an important thing to mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be reliant on depending on a external developer um to just be there when we need it. Um mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's my I can imagine yeah. any worship pastor who's watching this because I know a lot of worship leaders consume this, but they we basically we're not worship leaders in this role, but we're leading you know, teams, we have visions, we are sort of creative, yeah. and yet we feel at a loss, immersed in a world of technology. And, and I can imagine that's a world that a lot of worship leaders feel overwhelmed by, like, imagine just lights, sound, live stream. If I was a worship pastor today, I'd be, because I know how to lead songs and people right or talk yeah. in front of a microphone but i yeah. would feel overwhelmed by that and so yep um well that's why even i've that's why i've considered because like i'm you know because i've been through that journey too that's kind of why church front exists is like equipping worship leaders with understanding that but i've even thought like man maybe i need to go just suck it up and even just to understand not to even build something myself but to understand the realm <laughs> better go to like a software development boot camp just to kind of like sit through it and absorb it and mm -hmm. just because i don't even know how to like i don't even know how to have the intelligent conversation of i want to build this where do i find like the what 
I don't even know what coding platform or language or whatever you're supposed to use or like mm-hmm. stuff. I'm that ignorant about it. So hmm. I don't know. We'll see. But Jake, why don't Great. you just ask Bethel to help you? Yeah, because they have oh Bethel. Yeah, because they have a software development thing now, right? Bethel School oh. of Technology. There we go. I might be able to okay. check that out. There you go. For only sixty six thousand dollars, is that what it is? Or no, that's the. They're just saying that's the starting salary for a junior developer. So oh, which so oh, they're okay. just saying hey, it's a good job, a good field to go into. Yeah. That's the yeah. that's the one area I feel like like you could I, get I went the little to, church front logo here. Companies love to hire Bethel Tech grads. Oh, interesting. Yeah. We could just hire a Bethel Tech grad. That's actually probably a good place for us to look because they get, Seriously. if they're at Bethel, they appreciate like worship and the church stuff going on. So, huh. We're just figuring things out in front of everyone. What? You, yeah. <laughs> this is supposed to be, I mean, I don't know. Hopefully it adds, adds value to other folks as well. But Jake, we should have this conversation more often. We'll just like, you know, open up the stream, let people listen yeah. in and we yeah, I mean, because I, I, I think, you know, it's it's nice for, I like it whenever, I don't know, if it's fun to kind of see or just hear about the work that goes on behind the scenes to, to create some of the resources that uh, folks have available, you know, to them. And it's mm-hmm. like, for us, we're thinking about, you know, right now the question is, do we purchase this um, t- uh, a new NAS, which is a network access storage server, whatever the heck you call it for our studio um, our other one, uh, has some issues and we just need a better NAS. And it's like, it's like $23,000 for this mm. super duper hard drive basically. Right. And it's like, mm. um, just thinking through some of those pros and cons of this. Um, yeah, the jellyfish, that's what, that's what we want to get. Um, mm. because we've had, we've had, we've had more affordable ones, but we've learned some, some lessons, uh, the hard way about them and them mm-hmm. not being super secure just in terms of, Ugh, just that was a nightmare of a story, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're in the thick of things like this of like, okay, we're trying to make content every week, lots and lots of videos and courses and stuff like that. We get to store it and edit it all off the same server. So it's just like, when do you get to the point where it's like, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, you know, invest into these types of things, or do we invest in a developer to like make our yeah. website better? So I feel like that's yeah. what my life is right now is like, where do we allocate, you know, just, just allocating resources and time, you know? man hours yeah. towards these different projects well jake i just want to say keep doing what you're doing because for most people most people can't even afford to think about hiring a developer and you're basically that guy for most people it's like i just you're gonna keep watching jake and let him sweat it out mm-hmm. and i'll do whatever he because somehow through the journey that you are going through Stuff leaks out like I opened by saying, you know, when you talked about ECAMP, like literally I went on a, you know, I mean, I, you unlocked something in me and I mm. think you're constantly doing that, mm. that. And maybe that's what hopefully I'm doing a little bit too, is trying to yeah. unlock, you know, worship music for someone else who'd be overwhelmed by, I, there are so many songs. I don't even know where to start. What, what song I don't want to teach a song to our church that's just going to flop after two weeks. So give me something good or quality, right? So, yeah. Yeah, no, right. and that's what I, man, the, the praise charts as a, I mean, I like it from the, the, my uses are I'm planning a set and I just need to have the right chord chart and cause mm-hmm. I don't want to spend the time making one myself and, um, other resources out there. Um, who th- like they just the charts that they have just aren't good you know if it comes with song select or whatever i don't know if those guys are working on that at all but they're keeping <laughs> definitely keeping you in business their lack of creating good reliable yeah. charts and uh and then the other thing too though is is like the data of, of like again if i'm a worship leader looking for songs that will resonate with the congregation chances are if it's going to be you know trending or in the top hundred songs, like it's gonna, Mm -hmm. that's gonna resonate with people. And I think sometimes worship leaders think they have to spend so much time and so like trying to find, you know, some amazing hidden gem of a worship songs out there. But I don't know, like to me, I'd argue like a lot of these songs, the reason they're at the top of these charts is because they're, you know, good music that resonate with people. Most of the time, also good lyrics and, you know, theologically sound lyrics. I kind of trust the, 
almost like trust the hive mind of the church to like figure that out, yeah. you know? And I just feel like praise charts is like one of the best. It's it's really yeah. like a computational program that like shows us yeah. that, right? Right. So, but the, what you're describing about the hive mind, I think that's exactly what we're trying to tap into mm-hmm. programmatically is to tapping into the like the wisdom of the of the church. Yeah. You know the the hive, if you want to call it, of people who are sorting through these songs and and trying to bring the best ones up to the top. So. Yep we're we're trying to tap into it like we don't have an agenda behind any song a publisher does not own praise charts nobody has any ownership in praise charts beyond myself and i don't say that to like you know put myself up or anything but it's like we're not controlled by anyone this is just one guy who's just got a small team and you know, and we just tr- we're trying to be in great relationship with all the major music publishers so that they will feed us music. And we that was kind of my dream maybe 13 years ago. Like you're talking about, oh, I just wish I could have this and have that. And my dream was you could just have clear, clean relationships with like, you know, Capital and Essential and Bethel. And these are all the major music publishing companies that um, mm-hmm. if we could have good relations there. If they could trust us, if we could treat them well, pay the artists well, and then get it to a place where they start feeding us, hey, we're coming out with this album, or hey, we got this, or, and now that's happening. I have a really key person on my team who just basically is the publishing manager. So she tends to those relationships and our arrangers and just keeps that new music flowing in so it's it's really fun to be at a place because it used to be at a place where you know I was always feeling like I was at the mercy of what if they pull the plug you know Mm -hmm. Um, the people that own the intellectual property of the songs because technically that's that's what's out there right is these are these are pieces of property that that um, songwriters and publishers and whatever have to steward. And so, um, yeah, so, yeah, we've gotten to a place where that's smooth and uh, super grateful. We and uh, and uh, there's a lot of people also that they're like, oh, Christian music industry, it's they don't like this or it's just about the money or, you know, it's all marketing. And I don't. I don't, I'm a defender of there's a lot of great people in the corporate, even Nashville. There's there's good hearted people there. They're trying to do their job well um, and they're bringing us great music. I'm sure there's a few, you know, others like in the pile. But I, I don't know. I don't know who they are. The people that I've met and I know a lot of the people in that Christian music industry and I really like them. Like I'm, I'm, I am their defender. If anyone's watching, they can yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, no industry, no, no, nobody's perfect, but it's like, I don't know. Right. It's the same. Yeah. It, yeah. Most, most, most of the folks I come across are pretty well-intentioned about, about all yeah. this stuff and, and right. the way it works. And, uh, and that's what I, I do like to, again, that's another, the reason you mentioned you guys being independent of any publishers or labels I do feel like that's another advantage because it's tempting to go. There are some other great sites out there, you know, like if you go to, which one is it? Is it worshiptogether.com? They're, yeah. uh, they're owned by Capital, yeah. right? Yeah. So, which is great. Yeah. Capital Records is, is awesome um, in terms of like the artists they have and all that stuff. But if you go to Worship Together, like I'm pretty sure you're only going to see their like songs yeah. from their label, right? Like you're yeah. not going to see anything else. So, in ter- yeah. in, so it can be a little like, for worship leaders are like, Hey, like there are other, you know, you know, other places out there. I feel like yeah. pra- praise charts is probably the best, like aggregate spot. That's right. Of everything instead of just being kind of funneled in, or siloed into one publisher. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And worship together is, is great. I would, you know, I would use it often. I mean, and the charts are free there, but, but the thing that you don't maybe have there as much as, we really like dive deep into making great charts and even our chord charts, like you mentioned, we, we like sweat over making sure it's the right chord over the right syllable 
it's put in the right order, it reflects the recording. Um, if, if it's wrong, we fix it, you know, it's constantly, uh, we're constantly trying to improve stuff. So those details matter. And that might even start with me because like, I love a really good chord chart. I literally will spend time on a lot of our chord charts going back over them, making sure they're laid out well. Um, and they, funny enough, I try to make the chord charts laid out well enough that you can learn the song, internalize it, and hopefully ditch the chord chart by the time you get to the stage on Sunday morning, yeah. you have the song inside your heart because it's like just the same four chords over and over and over with a minor, you know, adjustment a few times. So many great songs are like that, right? If you can start to see the patterns and um, the repetition so I try to reflect that in our in our chord chart as well. And, and, They're good. Um, I, yeah, I good. rarely do I have to tweak much when I when I'm importing into Planning Center. It'll be, if I tweak it, it's more like I just I'm gonna arrange the song differently than uh -huh. than this. You know, I'm not gonna do the you know 21 sure. bridge repeats or something like that in this <laughs> song. But uh, yeah, yeah, and it's. Um, the other big problem you guys solve is like, you know, this is probably very common for a lot of worship leaders out there, but it's like, hey, I got a piano player who's like willing and ready to play, but they're like classically trained and they can only use sheet music. You know, it's just like, oh, yeah. I know that has been at every single church I've been at for the past decade. It's been like yeah. going to praise charts and getting right. buying the piano lead sheet um, and full notation or... Yeah. Um, every church is that we've got a choir and like, you know, once every quarter we want the choir to sing and it's like, okay, yeah. I'm going to like go to praise charts. You get the, the S a T B arrangements for yeah. four part harmonies and these in the latest hip elevation song, you can make it fit in a choral arrangement. That's pretty impressive. That solves a big problem for those mm -hmm. of us guys who, who pastorally <laughs> need to navigate, even if it wouldn't be our preference to, you know, have a choir or to, um, you know, have that style of piano playing at least you guys like you like help merge those two worlds so yeah it's been very helpful i came up with this uh this term the rock orchestra that's what we're trying to to find yes fuel, yeah is i want the rock choir the rock orchestra just meaning i don't want to sacrifice the sound of our modern you know worship if it's a modern worship song but people want to participate the guy that has a bass voice wants to sing yep in his vocal range why wouldn't he right so totally yeah yeah that's that's the prediction of the the worship pastor here at south fellowship he he was saying man i really think that that we're going to see more rock bands with choirs like you know the worship in the circle like the mm. Mm -hmm. uh what like what maverick city is doing what oh yeah like the gang vocal stuff yeah or like yeah mm. like just a a big choir with a, a rock band yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing actually to see that trend i i you know i think the the maverick city thing i'm kind of interested in that like what why is maverick city catching on so much what is it about them because they're so raw so unconventional in you know they're they they're like creating a new mold and and yet i don't know i'm just interested what do you, what do you guys think are, are you aware of that do you listen to them much is it do you think it's different new is there something is it covid based is it like is it the era that our world is in people are want something more authentic Probably. i don't know i'm just fascinated by that Probably not COVID based, um, because uh, you know you're not allowed to sing with other people. Yeah, <laughs> but well, I just meant more. Is it you know that being in COVID and we're at home and we're isolated and we're we're looking for something more authentic? We have a different need from church. I didn't mean you know is is Maverick. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm just wondering what's shifting in our worship landscape that is is bringing out more of that. I did an interview actually just a couple of weeks ago with Dustin Smith, mm. and he's talking about in his church as well. They just do it in the round. The band is in the center. Everyone's kind of standing. It's very raw. It's, it's unpolished, and people love it. So, I mean, I love that. I love to help promote that 
raw, authentic, you know, worship expression. I think it's the church can use more of that. Yeah. I mean, here's one idea. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, that was a thing for a while. And it is yeah. it's like there's something about like a blend of a large group of voices that's so beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um it was awesome when Kanye did this thing. I, I mean, like when I listened to the songs, like it was like, man, that's big and it sounds yeah. fun and like all you need is either just voices or just voices and piano and it still sounds huge. So Yeah. 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 And everyone's looking at each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Dustin was great when, when I interviewed with him and he was saying he just doesn't get it how, you know, we we set up church so that we can all look at the back of each other's heads. Like, what is that? Mm. So that's what promoted him to do this worship in the round or circle thing. He's like, I want to be looking at each other, you know, and singing these songs, hymns and spiritual songs to encourage each other. That's what the whole idea of it was. I thought it was really inspiring so yeah yeah i've i've been a part of events like that you know like you show up and it's just like the bands in the middle and every like everyone's singing towards each other and it's awesome but it's like you know i'm I'm wondering is the reason there's not we're not doing that more often in like normal sunday service church is just because it's not the tradition like we're just not used to it um i'm sure there are some churches out there that are like doing that more often yeah. So if you know anyone that's doing that, let us know. We'll chat yeah. with you. You know how Maverick City, speaking of them, are they are they associated with the church or are they just like a band? I, I'm, I'm like very uninformed. What, on... what I'm hearing is they're, they're kind of like what they call a collective. So okay. I don't know if they're a church, but they're, because obviously they're working closely with, with lots of different artists, Bethel and Elevation in particular are sort of merging in with them and artists are, seems like there's a lot of cross pollination of, okay. it's a, it's a community. It's but more uh, than it is. the song Gyra, Gyra, that's probably, I think what one of their more popular ones right yeah. now. And that um, Aaron was leading it a couple weeks ago. And it was funny when he's playing it, he was rehearsing it with like the multi-tracks and I thought he was doing the song uh, yes and amen. You know how the, the chorus goes. Um, Faithful yeah. you are. And then, mm-hmm. which sounds just like the gyra. It's like, gyra, you are enough. It's like the same chorus. Uh, right. So it was funny because he was like, I literally thought the whole time, it's like, oh, he's doing yes and amen this week. And I was like singing that back in the tech booth. And then he started singing gyra. I was like, what the heck is he singing right now? <laughs> so it's just so <laughs> funny. It's like, yeah, all these... You probably, that would be an interesting, maybe you could crunch your data on songs somehow to be like, what's the most popular chord progression of all the songs right now? Or like, say. If you were to like mash together, like the, if you, I don't know, like the ultimate worship song that combines every, all these elements from these yep. popular worship songs right now into yep. one. Well, the reality is there are only so many chord progressions. Totally, and yeah. I am amazed at how often, if you're musical, sorry, if you're not, you won't get this, but like the one, six, four, or one, six, five, four, that kind of one, six anyways, is, is just over and over and over. Great songs will go from C to A minor, or G to E minor, and then F or G or whatever. And it's the same... Mm-hmm. Maybe it's an American thing. I don't know. It's the same progression. Yeah. That X with the heart. So, yeah. Hmm. We got some questions in the chat. Oh, that'd be cool. I saw one for uh, from Ryland. Um, hey, Ryland, it's actually, he was on the show last week. So, yeah. Uh, he actually asked a good one about praise charts. Why not move to a monthly subscription model um, instead of the credit model? Hmm. Um, well, we are. One thing is these subscription mail models are super complex to program because you know, like tracking them and paying out royalties and yeah. negotiating them with publishers and all of that. So if it was as easy as just going, oh, well, we should just go to monthly, then you know we would probably do that. So we're we're working on some things like that, and I would confess that the the credit model. I mean, it's it's pretty old in that we've been doing it for 
for 10, 12, um, you know, I can't remember how many years, but the, the thing that's nice about it from an administrative perspective is we know when you spend the credit and uh, how to attribute the royalty to that to pay that out. And, yeah, you know, and that do does all that. Yeah, because that seems complicated. All the royalty things that you guys have to keep track of, like, I don't know how. I, yeah. I mean, I guess I know how, like, if you think about other companies, like, you know, whether it's, uh, let's say, uh, multi tracks is rental track rental program, right? They have mm -hmm. the data, and because those files are stuck in the playback app and they completely control and can track everything, then they can say, okay, um, you know, of all these songs we rented out this month, um, you know, so and so publisher, artist, whatever gets this cut because they they know exactly how many times that particular song was rented. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, but I guess it's it gets weird though. Like with I don't know, I'm just I'm just not kind of thinking out loud with some of these things. Yeah. If you don't control the property like that from throughout, like in every single way, it's harder to just track like how much it's actually yeah. being used and. You're kind of just you have to trust like how many times are people yeah. copying this this chart or whatever right like yeah well let me show you just something can you go to praise charts real quickly i want to just show yeah. you uh if you can seems like you can do that quickly and go down to the to the budget uh see on the on the left on the far left where it says uh at the bottom oh yeah what's that not that no not the very bottom budget friendly oh uh, yeah below yeah. yeah there so click on there and then go to the subscription. See where it says new, the green thing? I forgot oh. about this. Hmm. So this is actually a monthly plan of our credits where you're paying monthly and your credits are just accumulating and they're not going away. So there you go. I had forgot about that, that we did make a, a oh, monthly cool. version. Yeah. But the credits, so that people can understand, it, it is helpful for us because we're trying to keep this thing legal. Like it's not just pay pay starts. 50 bucks a month and we'll just average it out like we have to literally know how to attribute a dollar amount to every download and um yeah so we how to make music affordable but it's it's also got to work on a on a legal front if we don't keep nashville happy like quote unquote great starts is not happening <laughs> so. you know because i like to bring every conversation back to crypto currency have you thought well or one thing actually i don't know if you thought about it or not if you haven't i would think about it is the whole that non-fungible token nft space where the whole idea is kind of putting being able to assign intellectual property ownership or just, even just property ownership in a digital way on the blockchain and it would be interesting to see how that affects um the music publishing world eventually mm. so i don't know if anybody in your space have ta started talking about it how have you like heard of those before no this is like greek to me yeah it's it's so it's like the the big thing it's kind of gone it's kind of in the hypey phase right now where I, it's, I don't think it's i think maybe it's gonna be kind of like how bitcoin was in the hypey phase like three to four years ago and now it's in the actual serious adoption phase and then i feel mm -hmm. like nfts now are kind of in the hypey phase and maybe they'll kind of phase out or blow up a little bit and then and crash, whatever it's going to happen. And then maybe in five, six years, whatever, maybe less, they'll like catch on me more serious. But the whole idea is like, you know, people, you can buy a piece of artwork, right? Like a painting and you own this, you know, thing, this canvas with like color on it. And, um, the same idea or Pokemon cards and stuff like that. But the NFT space, it's like a digital version of that and being able to attribute ownership that way. And there was even some artists, uh, one, which, which popular band? Uh, Kings of Leon? Kings of Leon or someone like that just released mm. like an NFT version of an album. And, and it's kind of, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. And I just wonder what eventually that'll look like for the, music publishing space because mm -hmm. it does seem like there's a lot of um the music label and publisher world it just seems like there's a lot there's kind of a lot of middlemen everywhere like who get like right. a cut of things like you got you got the artist and then you got like the con end consumer or whatever and there's a lot of things yeah. in between and that's what blockchain and all this is about is decentralizing everything so that you can just have peer-to-peer -peer 
transactions and, and ownership changes and stuff like that. And it makes it things a little bit more simpler. But up until now, we just, you know, we didn't have the technology until blockchain was figured out. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's something, it'd be something to look into. I don't know how that would change the the way we work with worship music stuff, like whether it's the tracks or charts or whatever we, yeah. we're using out there. Um, it seems like it aligns with your values. You know, you're not like, you know, the American Heart Association. It's like taking money from the farming industry and then telling you how to eat. Like, you're like, oh, here are all the worship songs. Here are the ones that are yeah. doing well. Like, here's the, tr- you're, you're yeah. not like, uh, imp- you're, yeah, you're not funded by, and what's that called? Like, a, uh, I don't have the a word think, for it. Like a think tank or a, um, um, or label? No, no. I mean, just like somebody that has, uh, all, you know, like interests that aren't just um, usually baseline. Think, think tanks, right? Aren't they the ones that the politi- like in a political sphere, you got these big foundations that fund the pol- politics and stuff like that, right? Yeah. I don't know. That's that's what I was thinking of. It doesn't sound like it sounds like the, the blockchain thing kind of goes along with your, um, mm-hmm. yeah, your philosophy there. The, the end goal is you want to make the financial like exchange to feel seamless and timeless. That's that's definitely something like the, the best that we're doing right now is you either you buy the credits and then, you know, getting a song happens within three seconds. And then second to that is if you put your credit card in, which is secure. I mean, it's totally locked down. We don't see or whatever your, your credit card, but um, once it's in the system then you can buy things for a couple of bucks and you don't have to go through all the complicated checkout stuff there's quick checkout and yeah that's what i do amazing if you would look like i looked the other morning by you know eight o'clock in the morning and there was already like 160 transactions that had gone on since whatever (laughs) midnight and they're all like two dollar and fifty cent two dollar and fifty cent dollar 99 just people buying single chord charts and they just come in and man the amount of volume there's the volume you guys do that's that's just it's insane every time i buy i'm like man he must i buy like a two dollar chart and i'm like they must have to sell a lot of two dollar charts to like yeah be yeah man so well honestly i don't know this might be totally inappropriate to say but if i ever do well I mean, it, you know, Praise Charts does reasonably well. It's not like skyrocketing, but it's like we've worked hard to make it, um, you know, a smooth thing. But the, the financially, honestly, the goal is if we could just make a little bit of profit from a lot of people, then if we could do well yeah. from that, I feel like that's a legitimate way to succeed in, you know, in any kind of business, but particular a business where you're, you know, yes, we're making a bit of profit from music that's mostly servicing the church. And uh, some of you may totally disagree with that and think that Jesus should, you know, whip me with one of his cords. And <laughs> I've had to like, whatever, that's, I went through a whole season of my life where I was really wrestled with that. But, hmm. but um, one of the ways that I have kind of processed that whole question, spiritually, mentally, psychologically or whatever is i i do consider myself to be just like a plumber or a builder like i don't think praise church is a christian company Hmm. there you go i'll just say that i am a christian and my faith expresses itself in how i run this company but if you're a plumber or a, a an accountant or any company you can be a person of faith and and how do you operate your business um just because we sell christian music doesn't dignify us as a as a company could have lots of christian music companies out there could be run by you know greedy corporate um dishonest people and so i'm hoping i'm not one of those and yes i'll just put it right out there like i you know i'd love for praise charts to be super successful and uh, i'm hoping that it doesn't harm anyone along the way and it doesn't bust anybody's church budget obviously we're trying to make music affordable but Mm -hmm. 
give it away for free because the publishers don't let us. They they literally set minimums. You know, you they they tell us you can't sell music for less than this. Otherwise, it cripples. You know, the whole chain going down. It makes sense to me. So yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, I hope hmm. that comes across as like I'm trying to be authentic. I bet you I'm revealing more than I should, but no, um, no. That's good. We we love transparency here, and that's yeah. that's kind of it's just it, it. I I especially that's why I started a um I started a second YouTube channel for fun that I explore more about business and finance and even thinking more theologically about these things too. Because even mm-hmm. in all my years of being in um I went to a, a studied you know music and religion in my undergrad, and then I went to seminary um there's not much thought about economics and business or anything like that. Right. And that's not the world you're really gonna find much of that anyway. But it, a lot of this stuff I've been discovering over the past few years about um, just the importance of just how valuable, you know, business and capitalism is to just the, the, the thriving of like humanity thriving. Um, it, whether in, yeah. And of course it's not a perfect system and it's funny people propose other systems out there um, whether, whether it's socialism or whatever, but it's like, okay, the United States is not a perfect place, but it's, it's a pretty good place. A lot of people want to move here and it's kind of a reason why I got here. Right. Um, and the, I don't know, like it, people when I, Oh, the point I was going to make is that there's definitely, uh, in the church world and Christian thought, there's just, there's a lot of weird mindsets around money and mm-hmm. um how that relates to faith and then when the, when you get and then we see that you know definitely in the church space about budgets people have to work with and things like that and um but i don't know it, it's we we lo- like all of our customers are awesome we love the folks that mm-hmm. we we've been clients we've been working with and um it i think it's cool to i don't know it's just like I love adding value to to people's lives through these products and services that we offer. And then what's cool is like, yeah, you charge a price for it because then we can reinvest that back into the business and the team members and stuff like that. And then we provide a better service and product and solution for them. And it's just kind of this cool cycle that this flywheel or just keeps getting better and better and bigger. And it's, it's a fun thing that really Mm -hmm. excites me. I almost wonder, like you were saying that teaching about, this about finances about business it you don't find it a lot in seminaries no nope. bible schools but it's almost like maybe we should maybe we should talk about this well maybe the the thing that be- yeah the thing i've been really thinking about a lot lately especially because i've been thinking about macroeconomics in bitcoin is just just economics in general so not even like just business and finance but bigger picture things that go on with like currency and um and, and stuff like that and how there's just like no like a lot of this the economic systems we all operate in really you know cause i actually think it's it's one of the biggest ways that that sin can manifest itself in, in the brokenness of the world and it causes mm-hmm. a lot of pain and struggle and uh, but the church doesn't really ever talk about these things usually i think we end up talking yeah. about the second or third order consequences from some more systems like systemic issues um surrounding these things like i don't know it, that's that's why i'm yeah. like i want to if i were to really geek out over a topic other than worship and tech ministry in the future yeah. it's probably going to be this topic where faith and em- economics collide and like i said like yeah. there's not even like economics is a very academic uh field of thought and you see a lot of other worlds where theology does explore like anthropology or psychology or other fields. But I just feel like in economics, there's not a whole lot of exploration there. So if I ever, mm-hmm. I say if I were ever to like pursue a PhD, which I don't think I'd ever have the patience to do that. But if I did, <laughs> I would do something in like economics in uh, theology or theology of economics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's, there's no, I mean, I'd follow it. I think, I think we need good, deep, unafraid thinkers and uh, we need new paradigms that doesn't just make it about oh it's are you just trying to become rich or or not rich or whatever but it's like we're we're trying to add value it's a natural exchange of value in this world it doesn't have to be a bad thing and how you can 
how you can just walk in that in confidence and, you know, and live our lives and pursue dreams. Like I've got dreams. I've got dreams for my business. I have dreams for my family, my kids. I just became a grandpa this week. I think about generations oh, awesome. that are coming under me. I've got lots of things where I want to pour out blessing that comes my way. Uh, and like the other element to it is, I'm sure with you it's the case, but the amount of risk that just from an entrepreneur's perspective, if yes. one day we could talk about like the praise chart story and where my neck was like on the line with someone having a knife like halfway through my neck, like that's the kind of exposure that I put wow. myself, my family, my wife to, yep. uh, you know, in very fragile, tender places. Mm-hmm. Like we almost literally died, <laughs> you know. Uh, so Wait, are you talking about like a literal knife to your neck? No, okay, no. I but, but I am Clear talking enough. about almost you financially. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like we we've been through just just uh, a lot of strain on the risk side of of kind of things where it's tense. Yeah. You know, you're coming home. It's like, hmm. is this gonna make it next month? you know yeah so i'm we're not in that season right now so it's it's all great to talk about the story in the past it's a good season kind of a flourishing season even coming out of well most recently was when covid hit in march and i saw i watched the sales go just like that and i had no idea where the bottom was Hmm. so yeah how does that feel like when you're in your job where you're getting a salary and you know that's going to be the same yep um that's not how it is when you're a business owner you're like if this thing tanks i tank yep so that's stressful i um i turned 50 last year in june and in march the week that covid hit i bought myself a set of golf clubs a nice set of golf clubs on Wednesday, COVID struck on a Thursday, and on Friday, I called the golf store back. I was like, I need to send these back because I don't know if I can afford them. Oh, man. Yeah. So it was yeah. like, yeah. it hit me right, yeah. you know, right in the practical bones. So, dang, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, the risk thing and just the, the, the headache and the working insane hours, like to get something off the ground, um, Mm -hmm. kind of forget about it. Cause like things too have gotten to a more manageable place for, for us where we're at, like with church front in the past year or two, but like, cause it's weird. Sometimes I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can like work. I can work from like eight to four and like, I don't have to work more than that. (laughs) Like it's amazing Right. right now. But before I was just like, um, just getting things going. Some of the stuff, like when I look back at older videos on my channel, it kind of teleports me back to then just, it's a lot of insane amount of time to like start something and, and yeah. get it going. But when it builds momentum, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see, to see what yeah. happens after that. So man, there was another good question. I saw someone asked how they become a praise chart, uh, arranger or orchestrator. Hmm. Well, so we do, we get a lot of requests for, you know, people that want to submit their songs and, uh, well, submit their songs or be an arranger. So I guess one thing I would say is you could send an email to info at praisecharts.com and just say, hey, here's my history and some experience and here's some samples, uh, like where we would certainly be open to looking to that, but then there is kind of like the reality that we only need so many arrangers and there's only so many new songs that are kind of coming in to yeah. be worth producing. So, so that's kind of a reality. There's, I just wish that we could use a lot more people, but as it is, and, and then even as, as that goes, we, we bring in arrangers and uh, some people stay for a long time. Some people, they come and then, they sort of drift away into other areas of, of life. And it's just like developing any team sort of have developed a, a stable of guys where they like, they know us, they get us, they're committed. They, you know, they sort of become part of the communication system. And so um, 
I don't know. That's that's kind of where it's at. Is uh, I certainly want to be encouraging to you out there as arrangers and uh, songwriters, and I don't want to say there's a big wall like oh we're just a big closed door, but well, we can't take everyone. You know, there's just not a enough music and demand, and it's not how our our business functions like that. So yeah. we don't have a team of of like 50 different arrangers i've got i have one full-time orchestrator dan galbraith if you're in phrase charts you see his name all over and he basically orchestrates every day and if there's not an orchestration to do he'll do some other kinds of charts and then we have a a team of maybe half a dozen or so you know um like vocal arrangers and they're able to keep up pretty good I've got one really great chord chart person and she's pumping out about 20 chord charts a week. Wow. We should, we should have her just, on the show. Be like, how do you make yeah. an amazing chord chart? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, from charts. Yeah. you find someone, this is sort of like the team building principle. If you're a worship leader or you, Jake, just any team, you're looking for people that you can just depend on and then you stick with them so i've got a core team you know like natasha fogg she's our uh, customer support person she has been with me since the year 2000 so and she's like a gold mine for the company of phrase charts i don't mean gold mine as in i just mean she's very stable very committed um and you find those people you stay with them and then charlene is our publishing manager she, He's been with us for about 18 years and is well loved in the music industry and treat those people really well. And, and uh, it becomes like a family, right? So that's golden when you have a good team and you pour into them and they pour back to you and they treat praise charts like they own it, even though they don't, but they, it, it, um, it's what gives back to them their life, their lifestyle, their, um, you know, the joy of work. Like, I don't look forward to Fridays. I look forward to Mondays because <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to come to work. I love what I do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I hate Fridays because it's like, well, I like Fridays yeah. from the sense of it's my day. The most of our team works Sunday through Thursday. So Friday for me is kind of like I get the office to myself and, you know, I don't, no offense, Adam, but yeah. it's less. I just feel like I can get so <laughs> hey, much I get done. It. I get it. <laughs> and then, uh, but then Friday, I'm like, oh my gosh, we have, so, I have like so many other things I want to work on or time things I want to do, videos I want to film. But that's like me. Yeah. It's like almost end of day for me. And I'm thinking about like all the other things that I would want to accomplish before the week's over, like mm-hmm. things that are just fun projects that I could work on. And yep. Um, yeah. So yeah, when you love your work, it's awesome. And yeah. I don't think any of us are, are in it for the money. And so yeah. just to like bring it back to that financial piece, it's like, um, you know, as business owners or like entrepreneurs, it's not like, oh, we're going to do this thing that's like a pair church or not a church thing, uh, because we want more money. It's like, yeah. no, we love Jesus. We want to share the skills yeah. that we have with the world. And, um, I, I explain this in uh, one of our courses. It's like, as a worship leader, uh, my job, you know, has a lot of things attached to it. And if I get paid twenty, twenty-five dollars an hour, for me to spend two dollars and fifty cents on a chart that's like done well, that's going to serve my team, yeah. like that's stewarding my church's money better because wow. I'm not spending an hour, two hours, four hours, you know, building a chart from yeah. scratch. Then it when, becomes a $25 chart instead of a uh-huh. right. yeah, $2 cause, chart. Because you have professionals that are doing it all day long that, that do it right. So yeah. that's a good way but, to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, because like I wouldn't, as like your employer, if you told me you spent, like, hey, Jake, I just spent two hours making something I could have bought for $2. I was like, what? Right. <laughs> you idiot. What are you doing? <laughs> for sure. Huh. That's a good point to raise about that. And again, it's just weird uh somehow we take these concepts like be good stewards of your money try to save when you can into don't spend two dollars on a chart like you know right so man yeah wow time is time flies when we're having fun i think it's we've already Mm -hmm. been about an hour and 20 minutes or so oh boy no one's going to be listening to us at the end of this thanks for the 29 of you still hanging out yep yep Uh, 
<laughs> um, yeah, thanks so much. It's great to great to catch up with you, Ryan. And um, yeah, folks, let's do this again. Yeah. Well, and you're going to come on my show. Yep. So yep. we'll just continue the conversation. And I'd love to come back. I love talking tech and you know figuring out how life and dreams and tech all merge in. It all feels like worship to me. Like this is all worship life. Yep. Worship is about so much more than oh the latest greatest song. It's like let's talk about how you live your life. Yeah. Out of it all, right? So I feel like that's what this has been about. Yeah. I hope someday too when um the when Canada lets us uh United United States citizens visit, we can come head up your way on a, another trip oh, to the yeah. Northwest cuz you're you're in Vancouver, right? So, yeah, I would I would be a great host to you. I'd love to have you in yeah. my home and our office and show you around some great scenery. Yeah, that'd be that'd be fun to do. But uh, who knows? I don't like. Is it still? Because you guys are like locked down quite a bit right now. Still. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. I live 20 minutes from the border, and I haven't been to the states in 14 months. Wow, so, man. Yeah, and I used to go there like probably every week. Cause I have a mailbox literally in the States to pick up my U S mail. Yeah. And, uh, it was just, it was, it's like another province to us. It's super easy to get across the border. I've got a Nexus pass, which is like, yeah, you know, you just sort of wave to the border guard and he kind of like that. But yeah, um, I, have, I have all these friends in Canada who I can't see because of this. Yeah. Got yeah. Ryan, got Brady. Uh, Jeff with church motion graphics, like all, all the guys like, Hey, can't you guys could come here though. Right. Well then wouldn't they let you come here and you can go back? No, no. no. Well, I think maybe I could, maybe I could go there. I'm just trying to think of if it's closed or not. There's all these quarantine issues and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we don't, well, so- I mean, we, we can't in BC, we're not even allowed to travel right now outside of our health zone. So wow. I've got, like we can't go more than about 45 minutes away from our house. Technically We're supposed wow. to stay, stay put. I don't see other people other than my kids and my family and a couple, you know, sort of tight knit friends. My social life is very trimmed down. Yeah. Um, been that way for a year. Or so I'm like most, most other people, you know, well, hence you have the high end live streaming set up now. And it's just, well, it's kind of like you got to <laughs> invest in something to, break through the the wall right yeah. and and uh for me live streaming became a bit of a hobby that was like oh man i can't wait to get to work i don't want anyone i don't want to see anyone i just want to figure out camera and mic settings and figure this program out and, <laughs> and it's been super fun to do it like even we're doing here it's, it's yeah. great let's do more of this Great. Well, folks, go check out Praise Charts if you want the best resources for prepping for worship on Sunday. And huh. go follow Ryan's account. I'm sure he's got his YouTube channel. And then yeah, I'll Praise put, Charts Live. Yeah. yeah, Praise Charts Live. And I'll, I'll go ahead and throw that in the description of this video. Or yeah, just... praisecharts.com forward slash live. And that will take you right to it. So look at that. That's why we need uh, That's yeah. why I need a fancy developer right there. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But uh, and hey, hey, yeah, we should probably do a quick shout out for the Worship Innovators Conference because yes. you and I are going to be in that. And Matt McCoy would be really upset with us if we didn't do a shout out for that's him. true. Go to worshipinnovators.com, sign up for the it's a virtual conference. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I wish it was, it's kind of bummed it wasn't in person anymore, but who knows, maybe a later year we can. But it's going to be an online conference, and then Ryan and I are going to be contributing contributing to it. Yeah. Uh, along we're doing with... a session or two together, so I think I am like the host of a of a we panel are? that you're on. That'll oh, cool! I didn't. Even, I I probably need to look into my responsibilities for yeah. that pretty soon. Brace yourself, man! I'm going to come up with some some uh, questions from left field. Okay, so. planning center. Awesome. Aaron going to be there uh, with you guys too. Who's that? Aaron going to be there with you? I see planning center. Uh, yeah, I hope so. I don't know which person they will, they will have, but since it's virtual, Aaron is hilarious online. I would, I hope he could be there. I, I watch his little shorts on, oh, yeah. on Facebook. Funny I guys. haven't seen his stuff anywhere. Where is, where is oh, his stuff? Man. Is it in Instagram? I think it might be Instagram or. Is it just his personal account? Yeah, it okay. must be. But it's so funny. If, 
you got to watch the latest one was right? about ducks in his pool and i gave it to my wife and she was splitting herself in laughter what's watching. his last name again aaron stewart oh yeah yeah so uh that's that's a pretty common name is it yeah. the top one i gotta find him aaron stewart uh oh yeah yeah but i think yeah that's so yeah. it's I don't see anything I recognize there. You'll try it in Facebook as well afterwards, but yeah. it's definitely worth following. He's a he's a very funny, comical, comical guy. So yeah, he's gonna be a cool guy. He's built like the app that all of us use yeah. like every single day. I know. He's <laughs> all also the time. like a he's like a wizard that uh, has transformed the lives of many, many yeah. churches and worship leaders. Yeah. Well, cool. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, to this episode of the Church Front Show. Like, subscribe, share. If you're listening to the podcast, subscribe to the podcast. Thank you, Ryan. See you all next time.